just one normal day of an association football club. Please, that's all I want. Some things have happened. Yesterday, at about 7 o'clock, the club, Coventry City, announced that a man called Doug King, who no one has ever heard of uh, in relation to football clubs, is taking over an 85% majority share stake in the football club, with CSU retaining 15%. That came completely out of nowhere. It was a massive shock. It was a very apt timing, considering that there was a court case this morning, uh, the day I'm recording this, the 17th, uh, regarding the sale of the CBS Arena to, as it's been confirmed, Mike Ashley's Fraser Group. People are sceptical, fair enough. They're right to be sceptical. It's a very weird situation. The bid that the the club, I don't know who exactly that, that refers to, probably Doug King, uh, bearing in mind he's not the only yet, he's signed an agreement as far as I can tell, and we're just waiting on the EFL approval. The bid that whoever it was made was for 25 million, subject to due diligence. Due diligence. That's always difficult to say. Due diligence. Due diligence. Uh, yes, so the long and short of the court case this morning was that Mike Ashley and his Fraser Group basically provided 1.2 million to the arena companies in lieu of um, actually owning the stadium as bridging finance to make sure that the lights stay on and the doors stay open, which has allowed the club to play there for the last couple of home games as there was a little bit of uncertainty after Wasps went into admin. So there was that that happened, and I think that's the main reason that the judge gave the decision to Mike Ashley and the Fraser Group, because without it, if they had extended the date of the administration notice, the companies would have gone into liquidation, which would mean closing down the company which is no good for anyone, that's a, that's a lot of job losses, that's no good for Conti City, it's no good for anyone that was a tenant there, because there was some other businesses, I think one of them being Skyries in the community, which used the arena grounds, so that couldn't happen, and if they did extend the date, the Fraser Group appeared to have threatened to walk away from the deal, which it would essentially doom them to liquidation, which would be all the things I just mentioned about everything closing down. The reason that Doug King's bid wasn't accepted. We'll assume it's Doug King. The reason that his bid wasn't accepted was because essentially it was too late. The bid was a better bid, but it was a pre-pack agreement from Mike Ashley and the Fraser Group, which means that because they provided the bridge of finance, they also got an exclusivity period, which ended today. And it's now been confirmed that they will take over the stadium uh, with the administration going ahead for the, for the companies. So they couldn't really get away from that. The problem that the judge had, it seems, is that he couldn't confirm today, because it's such a late bid, that the funds and the seriousness was there from Doug King. So to make sure that the business doesn't fail completely, he had to sell it to Mike Ashley today, because that was there. The bid was credible, it was serious, it was obviously a genuine bid, and the money's there. So it's been sold. That's fair enough reasoning. You can't really knock him for that. As upsetting as it is as a cough fan, because we all thought that we'd have it be in with a sniff. And I think in normal circumstances we would be. But the arena had £1,201, I believe, was the figure given by Simon Gilbert uh, in the bank account. And they have a, I think it's a £2,000 energy bill due tomorrow. And there's little, little, lots of other figures being thrown around. £3,000 would have been, sorry, £300,000 would have been needed by the end of tomorrow to keep it trading and then just shy of three quarters of a million pound by the end of the month to keep it trading. So it basically it had to be done today. And that wasn't possible with the time frame that Doug King has given. Now he is talking about wanting to buy the stadium from Mike Ashley. We don't know how that's going to go. Allegedly the money's there for him. Um, if Mike Ashley was willing to listen to the offer, I've got no idea if he would even go there. That That is a proper case of wait and see. But... The question is, is this a legitimate takeover? We don't know. Doug King, a very successful businessman, he's made a lot of money in a lot of companies. He's a CEO of, I think, I don't know how to pass it, I think it's Yellow or Yellow Company, which is, I think that's the rapeseed uh, 
manufacturer, not manufacturer, but whatever, they, they deal with rapeseed and grain or whatever. I think it's like a food processing company or something or other. I don't know. I've tried to do a little bit of research into this, but I couldn't really get my head around it. If there's something I can find that I can put in post, I'll whack something there. Um, he's also a commodity trader who knows Sisu. His business part, well, there's this, the story that's going around, and I think he said this as well in the interview with the local radio station, is that his business partner is Dermot Coleman's brother, and Dermot Coleman used to be on the board of Sisu. So this is basically a case of my neighbour's cat's dog knows uh, somebody else that worked there. And it's is, it is proper. It is one of those very loose links, but it's a link, and that's concerning people. And that's fair enough, because the, um, the theory is that this whole deal is to try and drive up the price of the football club should my Cashley want to buy it? And that's an argument I totally understand. But we really don't know what his intentions are. We have to wait and see. It's potentially exciting uh, because if he's serious, he looks like he's got some money to spend. I mean, he was talking this morning on the radio about not selling anyone in January. He assured the fans that there'd be, we wouldn't be a centre club in January. He looks like he wants to really put in some money into the pot to uh, assist us get promoted, which is another reason... Well, maybe, maybe the overriding reason that Cecil have kept a fifteen percent stake. So there was a lot of debt in the in the in the business of the football club to Cecil. Around about sixty millions worth is the figure being touted. I don't know how legitimate that is, but that seems to have been the figure that's around for a while. So it's widely accepted as being the figure. So with the news of this takeover, that has been wiped out, which is good. But it also means that. Sisu retained that 15% stake because that was the agreement. So if we did get to the Premier League, they still got a quite you know, sizable part of the pie. The 50% of the 150 million, that's decent money. Um, so they would love to keep that up. I mean, 150 million is, I think that's the playoff final um, winner's pot. But there's, you know, there's obviously a lot of money from going up in any case. I think the playoffs looks like the most likely route. So that's where the number comes from. And even so, just that one game, then having a season in the Prem, that's going to bring in a lot of money as well because the TV revenue just skyrockets in the Premier League, as we all know. We just don't know at this stage. It, it's such a difficult one to digest because it's come out of nowhere. It looks very exciting. The guy looks legit. He's willing to be interviewed. He was outside the courtroom after the ruling was given by the judge today saying that he knew this would probably be the likely outcome. And that he's still in it for the long run. He said that he was willing to buy the club and it had been agreed regardless of the stadium situation. So if he's legitimate, he looks like he could be a good steward for the club. And this is where it gets very interesting because we just don't know. We don't know yet. We Really, we won't know probably until the end of January and see what his intentions are then because uh, he's still waiting for EFL approval. We are, we're not going to see any club football with Coventry for at least a month. So we can't make any judgments based off of that at all. We really don't know. This is such a changing situation. But I wanted to talk about it to some degree because, oh my days, even just for me to get off my chest trying to figure it all out in my own head, like this is nuts. This is absolutely mental. This could be brilliant or it could be a disaster. And that is where I'm leaving it today. This is not the last I'm going to talk about this. Hopefully some of what I said has made some semblance of sense because to me, this is a complete cluster. But we move on. See you later. All the best.